every chemical industry or manufacturing industry operating high temperature reactions to carry these high temperature reactions every industry required a materials which are highly stable at high temperature also these highly stable high temperature materials is called refractory materials and today our topic is refractory materials it's going to explain what is refractory materials and classification properties of refractory materials so what is refractory material so refractories are generally inorganic or ceramic material which are highly stable at high temperature without softening melting or deforming they cannot deform they will not soft at high temperature the dimensionals everything is same after high temperature operation those materials are called refractory materials you can see the different crucibles cleans muffel furnaces all these are the example for refractory materials let's see the applications of the refractory materials the main property of refractory metals are they have to highly stable at high temperatures they have high melting points over the metals so that is the most important application property of the refractory metal because of that property and some of the refractory metals are not heat resist heat uh, conducting materials they are resistant to thermal heat that's why they are using underline for the hot surfaces and some of the refractory metals are good at heat conducting property that's where they are used to prepare furnaces cleans incinerators and reactors so these are all are using in every industry so they are also used to make crucibles molds in metallurgy cement steel paper refining industries so and also used for the surface flame deflector systems for rocket launching structures so when you are using rocket launching the so rocket during the rocket launching high heat energy releases to to stay, to bear that heat energy the surface should be very resistant to heat energy and flame refractor so that's why these refractory metals used as a surface frame deflectors uh, uh, to protect the surface without decaying before launching the rockets so these are the main applications of refractory materials and so classification ba mainly based on three factors so first one is fusion temperature so fusion temperature mean at which refractory metals become melt at which temperature it will become soft so based on the temperature refractory metals can be classified into three types normal refractory materials high refractory materials and super refractory materials normal refractory metals stable up to 1780 degree centigrade 1780 degree centigrade so generally they are stable from 1580 degree centigrade to 1780 degree centigrade over the 1780 degree centigrade it they are become soft that mean if the operation temperature is more than 1718 degree centigrade you cannot use the normal refractory metals for high operation reactions example for normal refractory metals is fire clays and next class is high refractory materials they are stable up to 2000 degree centigrade so you cannot use high refractory metals over the 2000 centigrade operation temperatures examples are chromites and super refractory metals their fusion temperature is greater than 2000 degree centigrade so zircon silicon carbon dioxide all these are the example for the super refractory material this classification based on their fusion temperature so next one the refractory metals can be classified based on their chemical nature so one thing is during the chemical reaction for example if you are doing a chemical reaction in a refractory material that chemicals cannot interact with your refractory materials so for the chemical nature is also very important for the refractory material so refractory metals can be classified into three types acid refractories basic refractories and neutral refractories acid refractories are made by acidic materials just like silica zirconia so fire clay 
the, these are the acidic oxides so when you use it to make a refractory these oxide that is called acidic refractories acids never interact with the acids that's why you can allow allow all acidic reactions in acidic refractory materials but you, you are not allowed to do a basic reactions in acidic refractories that's all and basic refractories are generally made by a basic material like magnesium oxide calcium oxide so these are the basic refractories you can do all basic reactions on the basic refractory materials but you are not allowed by acidic reaction why because they are easily affected by acidic materials and final one is neutral refractories they are made by amphoteric materials like aluminum and chromites so you can do the all basic or uh, acidic reactions within the neutral refractories so this is the classification based on the chemical nature of acidic um, chemical nature of refractory materials and next one and final one classification based on metal oxide nature metal nature for example if the refractory metal is only made by one type of metal oxide then it is called single metal oxide single oxide refractories if the refractory having more than one metal that is called metal ox mixed refractories if a refractory doesn't have any oxide only non metals only is there like silicon carbon dioxide tungsten carbide so this is called non oxide refractory okay so first one is single oxide refractory examples are alumina al2o3 magnesium mgo zirconia zro if you see only one oxide is present in the materials these are are called single oxide refractories and mixed oxide if you observe the zircon firecly they are the combination of zirconium and silica zircon and firecly is a combination of aluminum and silicon dioxide uh, water molecules so that is a mixed re oxide refractory if you observe the silicon carbide tungsten oxide boron nitride there is no oxygen oxide present in the material without oxide also refractory metals can be formed there is called non oxide refractories this is the classification of the refractory metals and properties of refractory materials so there is a many properties is there we are going to discuss at least eight properties or nine properties the first one is refractoriness a refractoriness a good refractory should have high refractoriness refractoriness means stability of material at high temperature without any change in si shape size and chemical composition so it is very stable at high temperature operation is called refractoriness so generally refractoriness can be determined by knowing the polymetric cone equivalent pce this can be make by made the material as a cigar coin cigar coin means it is a one type of pyramidal type of coins which have 38 mm height and 19 mm long sides you need to which materials refractoriness you want to know you want to test that metal can be made as a cigar coin that cigar coin is heated in the inert furnace so by increasing the temperature 10 degree centigrade per minute like that if you operate the temperature at which temperature the cones are become melt the cone shape is converting they are bending that temperature is noted and it is shown as polymetric cone equivalents that like that refractoriness can be measured okay so this one is high strength or refractoriness under loading refractoriness under loading refractory metals we know refractory metals are highly stable at high temperatures but not only sufficient this property so highly stable at high temperature with loadings with loadings also the metal should be stable at high temperature that is called high strength or that is called strength a good refractory metal should have high strength this can be determined by using rul test rul means refractoriness under loading so a constant load 3.5 or 1.75 kg per centimeter for load is applied on the refractory metal which is made by 5 cm square area and 75 cm height so first of all you have to made a refractory metals in the size of 
5 cm square area and 75 cm centimeter height on that you need to keep 3.5 kg per centimeter square and apply the heat energy at which temperature at least 10 percentage deformation takes that is the uh, taken as a rul that is expressed as a rul okay so limitation is 10 percentage deformation at which temperature 10 percentage deformation takes place that is the uh, rul capacity of that material so next property is high dimensional stability so a good refractory should have high dimensional stability refractory metal should be resistance to any changes so shrinkage or swelling cannot be happened during the high temperature operations so the dimensions uh, length width thickness doesn't change over the high temperature operation then it is called highly thermal stable molecule and fourth one an important one is chemical inertness refractory materials uh, purpose is to perform a chemical reaction but not involved in a chemical reaction we are taking different chemicals in the refractory materials that chemicals are involved in the reaction but not our refractory material so refractory metal should be highly inert in chemical chemical nature inert in chemical nature so a good refractory metal doesn't involve in any chemicals like gases slags foams or anything that is called high chemical inertness is the one of the very good property of refractory material so next one is low porosity porosity means porous nature every metal having a porous nature porosity can be measured by the ratio of its pore volume to bulk volume if pore volume is higher than the bulk volume porosity is also high if the porosity is also if porosity is high then it attracts the different smogs gases air into the that, that cavities it it leads to wastage of thermal energy and also the captured gases are interact with the material and damages the material so low porosity is the ideal for the refractory materials and next one is low thermal spalling thermal spalling means breaking peeling cracking fracturing of the refractory metals due to rapid changes in the temperatures when you are applying high temperatures maybe some refractory metals can be break down or peel as a patches or crack somewhere packturing somewhere this is called thermal spalling thermal spalling should be low for the uh, should be low for the good refractory materials you can avoid the thermal spalling by increasing the porosity actually porosity is not ideal for the material but porosity also helps somewhere that the air that is thermal spalling can be prevented by using porosity so next one is thermal expansion so good refractory material possess low thermal expansion coefficient if a material having uh, involved in high thermal expansion it may not come back into this original shape at whenever using cool down the material so when you are heating the material when you are involved the refractory metal in high temperatures so it will be expand so when you cool down the temperature it come back into its original shape if it is not come means it has a higher thermal expansion coefficient but a good refractory metal should have low thermal expansion coefficient and and eighth one is low electrical conductivity so refractory metals are not allow the passage of conductivity they should not allow they should be as a insulators so refractory metal should have a low electrical conductivity so these are the refractory metals four refractory metals uh, four properties like uh, uh, high refractoriness and high chemical inertness high dimensional stability high strength or refractoriness under load and these are the high they, they should be high for a refractory metal for behave as ideal one and low porosity low thermal spalling low thermal expansion low electrical conductivity it should be low and ninth one is thermal conductivity thermal conductivity so i already told refractory metals used as a hot underlining for the hot surfaces when you are using underlining purpose refractory metal should not allow the passage of heat 
and also in applications refractory metals used to made a crucibles insulators and different reactors at that time they should act as a good conducting for the heat that's why depending on the operation they have some of the refractory metals are good in conductive in the heat energy some are not conduct the heat energy it's totally depending on the which type of reaction you are want to do so these are the properties of refractory metals so what will happen if a refractory metal doesn't show the high refractiveness so what will happen if a refractory metal doesn't show the high chemical inertness what will happen if the refractory metal having high dimensional stability so what will happen if a refractory metal having a high porosity high thermal spalling if refractory metal doesn't follow its properties that refractory metal involved in failure it will involve in crack or break or some chemical explosive okay so that is called failure of refractory metals if a refractory metal having low refractiveness low chemical inertness low dimensional stability or low strength the metal involved is called failure of refractory so if you are having high porosity high thermal spalling high thermal expansion and high electrical conductivity that is also called failure of refractory metal so a good refractory metal always should follow the properties of refractory materials if doesn't follow it in it leads to failure of refractory materials so thank you for listening